morning. It's school day four and 12 degrees in downtown Winnipeg. Coming up, a young man was dangling off the edge of a bridge, addicted to drugs. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Wolo. I want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel and have seen my videos. As usual, I love sharing information and um, that's what my channel is about. So like I promised that I will try to segment things and um, you know, share videos about life happening in Canada on Wednesday. So today is Wednesday. I'm actually rushing to go for an appointment and um, I decided I'll do this video while on, while trying to get to um, catch up with my appointment. <clears throat> so today I'll be talking about um, the struggles of every new immigrant in Canada. Yeah, we have the, the excitement of getting the visa, becoming a permanent resident in Canada is always there. Once you land, um, there is this, how will I call it, they call it honeymoon phase. So there's this honeymoon phase, the excitement and everything. And, um, you know, you're just excited that you've left your home country. You're in a new country with where the system works and everything is okay. But at the same time, that honeymoon phase just fades away. And then you come into reality phase and then you start experiencing the struggles of every almost every new immigrant well there are a percentage of new immigrants that don't get to experience these struggles and those are the people who have family members and siblings who have been you know preparing them ahead of time um before they land in canada so those ca category of people they don't really experience it because they have the support of a family member but if you don't have the support of a family member there are you know a lot of struggles that every new almost every new immigrant faces when he or she immigrates to canada so today i'll be talking about about eight um struggles of every new immigrant in canada and one of them is um uh, getting a house getting a house is is a big struggle for most new immigrants considering the fact that you don't have a rental history you don't have a credit history you're coming from a country that um you know you don't get to provide those things because uh, those things are not there if you want to rent a house just go look for a house and then if you are if you like it you come like you have an agreement with the landlord and you pay your rent up front but in Canada here yeah, you need to have a, a rental history and uh, it's very difficult getting a rental history so that's one number one challenge most new immigrants face when they land in Canada that's getting an affordable house to live and having a rental history that can you know facilitate getting the house or renting a an apartment um, in canada then secondly daycare for kids so this is a very big challenge in canada most new immigrants will face this challenge except they have a family member or a friend who is a sit-at-home person to take care of their kids getting a daycare everywhere in canada there is also usually wait list and that's one thing you get to experience the waiting is so long because a lot of people are on queue trying to get um, into get their kids into daycare so that they can have time to go look for jobs and stuff like that. So it's um, important that once you land, you you start you apply immediately and start calling all the daycare centers as soon as possible so that if there is any available slot, your children can easily fit in. Sorry, I'm being distracted because um, I'm in downtown. I'm in downtown area, so my eyes are darting left right and center I, i'll try as much as possible to focus okay so getting a daycare it's a big issue it's a big issue and it's a, it's expensive it's it is expensive putting your kids in daycare and it's also uh, it's, you you waste a lot of time or you you're on the waiting list to get a daycare to get your children sorted so that's one major challenge a lot of um, new immigrants face especially if they don't have family members or friends to help in taking care of their children so that they can run around go do one or two businesses or run around for interviews and stuff like that so that's one major challenge um, new immigrants face then number three is finding a family doctor so just like the daycare people being on the waiting list to get a daycare so it is also finding a family doctor in canada finding a family doctor in canada is um, is a very tough one because there are shortages of doctors in Canada and um, there are immigrant doctors but you know whilst they are waiting to get into the process of becoming licensed and registered doctors and all that um, the few ones are overloaded with uh, people so 
finding a family doctor and it's very important to get a family doctor because the family doctor is the one that has to refer you if you need um, if you need special treatments if you if you need access to um, running tests you know if you're sick and you want to run tests although people go into walk-in clinics there are walk-in clinics everywhere that can you know just do random tests for you and um, you know prescribe drugs for you but you need a family doctor to refer you to for special cases and it's very important to get a family doctor so it's very hard getting a family doctor because there are doctor shortages in my in, in Canada and that's one uh, challenge a lot of immigrants face not only new immigrants even Canadians themselves a lot of them go two years three years four years without even having a family doctor there was a lady who in I think it was in Nova Scotia and uh, she did a Facebook live complaining of not having a family doctor and if she had a family doctor the family doctor would have um, caught the diagnosis of her having cancer at the early stages for for it to be treated but unfortunately because she didn't have a family doctor they didn't um, get to diagnose the cancer um, at the early stages and it was now it was when they had gotten to i think stage four that was when they were able to diagnose that she had cancer and up till then she still did not have a family doctor even the wait list of getting a family doctor the wait list of you know getting treated sometimes um if you want to do a test it takes as long as three months six months for you to even go to do a test like um, mri or ct scan that is if it's not an emergency if it's an emergency yes you can have access to those things but if it's not an emergency you it, you know before they will now book you before you now see go for your appointment it takes time so um, that's one major challenge a lot of new immigrants face and that's getting a family doctor so that's number three number four is learning the banking system um, the banking system in Canada is sort of similar like similar to a banking system anywhere in the world but the difference is while Canada is operating a credit has a credit system back home we don't have a credit system so a lot of a lot of new immigrants do not understand the credit system in Canada and then they come and get themselves into debt uh, you know buying things on credit by financing things and then get into serious debts and they are struggling to pay off their debt and you know with the credit system you pay interest of about 21 percent percent on any item you purchase and if you don't pay off within 21 days within the window you are given to pay off that credit card credit card um, debt you now start paying about 21 percent interest on the money you have spent using your credit card so a lot of new immigrants do not understand the credit card system in canada they don't understand the banking system in canada back home where we are coming from is pay as you go but in canada here you have to use the credit system because you need to build your credit history um i think it's a broad topic about banking which i'm going to talk about on a separate video but i'm just trying to give a summary of the struggles new immigrants face when they come to canada so that's number four um number five is getting a driver's license yes everybody knows how to drive from your home country but when you come to canada it's a different ball game because you have to learn the road signs you have to learn everything all over again you do your road test you do your knowledge test and then you do your road test so driving in canada is a different ball game entirely a lot of people fail their test and sincerely i will say the truth me too i failed my own test and i failed my own five times i had to it was it was okay i failed it four times it was the fifth time i was able to get my driver's license you know so it's a struggle learning how to drive learning the signs knowing what and what will you know um what is required when you're driving and a lot of people find it difficult um learning these things and then at the end of the day they they it takes time for them to get their driver's license which becomes a struggle and in most cases in most jobs require you having a driver's license if, if you look at the job a lot of job adverts they'll put valid class five driver's license valid class six to a four driver's license and if you don't have a driver's license you can't get the job so that's one challenge um new immigrants face that's getting their driver's license and passing their road test um so the next thing is um getting a job which is a major thing every new immigrant faces that challenge of getting a job as except for those who must have gotten their jobs back home before immigrating to canada or had a valid job offer before immigrating 
Anybody who immigrates to Canada without getting a valid job offer, one of the major trouble he or she might face is getting a job. Because you now start learning how to redraft your resume. Like in my home country, they call uh, resume CV, curriculum vitae, but in Canada it's called resume. So you get to uh, expunge that out of your vocabulary and your diction and you, you stop talking about resume and CV, you start talking about resume and then you have to start learning how to draft cover letters and stuff like that, the Canadian standard. So these are the challenges a lot of new immigrants face. Drafting your resume, the Canadian standard, targeting your resume so that you can get a job in the field that you desire. Um, it's a very broad topic which I'll be expanding on in future videos, but this is one major um, challenge a lot of new immigrants face. And at the end of the day, they settle for you know minimum wage jobs. Um, and hopefully I'll do a video on minimum wage in Canada as well. So this this is a very is the in fact it is the biggest challenge every new immigrant face when he or she arrives in Canada. Uh, then the next point is um, adapting to the weather during winter. Winter is brutal. I won't lie to you, especially those of us who live in the very colder region of Canada, like Manitoba. Winter is extremely, extremely brutal, and it's is is adapting to it is is a nightmare you you in, in as much as um if, even for even canadians themselves they also do not they also try as much as possible to adapt to it but you find them you know traveling during winter take one month off and go to maybe mexico or any any tropical country any warm country and taking the sun for a while before coming back to canada to continue travel to continue living um, throughout the winter period and winter lasts for some provinces like Manitoba winter lasts for as long as eight months and then you just have four months of hot weather summer and that's it the cycle again starts all over again so for me I find it frustrating especially when I feel it's it should, it should um, winter should end and then the cold is still there it's still it's frustrating for me I really find it frustrating but I have to adapt that I have no choice at the moment but hey what do we do so adapting to the weather is weather is a very big challenge and um, um, it's something that a lot of new immigrants find difficult to adapt so that's one major challenge for new immigrants then the last but not the least is I've gotten to where I have my appointment so the last but not the least point is um, communication in English Canadian English they have their accents, they have their different ways of pronunciation. And it's, um, you know, we come in with our different accents, with the way we pronounce words. Um, in Canada, you have to accentuate your words and you have to, you know, um, pronounce very well so that they can hear you. I had a struggle at the beginning. Well, I would say it's a struggle. I, I discovered that a lot of Canadians um, find it difficult understanding when an african man speaks in his in his or her accent african asian asian like indians and africans generally africans um that's because we they they, they feel that we speak too fast so i had a, a situation where um you are called for an interview and then you're speaking and the person interviewing you says i can't hear you and you're like but I'm speaking English. Is, why is this person not hearing me? I am speaking, I'm actually speaking English. Why is this person not hearing me? So the trick to um, speaking well so that they can hear you is speaking slowly. You have to start picking your words slowly and accentuating your words, or not accentuate, enunciating your words. So you have to drag your words and let them hear you. And the arrow just have to keep rolling, you know? So. Communication and accent is a major struggle for many new immigrants because the person you're trying to communicate does not hear you very well and does not even understand what you're trying to say. So you have to speak slowly. For people who who um, will go for interviews, it's important you speak very, very slowly so that the person who is interviewing you can hear you. Because if you don't speak slowly and you just, you know, just talk as if you talk normal, um, you might and at the end of the day lose your job lose not lose your job. you might at the end of the day lose the opportunity because the person interviewing you does not hear what you're saying 
um so those are the struggles of new immigrants and um, thank you for watching and have a good day bye bye